The other day, Mike had a dentist appointment. When he came to the dentist's office, he saw two doors leading to the rooms. The administrator was away, so Mike decided to find the right room himself. He opened the right door first, and then he checked the left room too. Where was the real dentist? The real dentist was behind the left door. Look, the dentist stands over the chair and holds a dental instrument in his hands. In the chair, there's a teenager who's having his teeth professionally cleaned. But behind the right door, the dentist is holding a tattooing machine. A teen in that room is looking at him with suspicion. Jennifer was exploring some spooky old house, looking for fancy antique things. Some hours later, she got tired and decided to have a quick lunch, which she had packed in the morning. She went to the dining room with a large table and three chairs, lit the candles, and was about to take a seat. But all of a sudden, she spotted something weird about most of the chairs in that room. What chair should Jennifer sit on? Jennifer was super attentive. That's why she sat on the chair in the middle. The one on the left has a sharp nail sticking out, and the one on the right is already taken. Look! There's a ghost sitting on it. Stuart was taking the final cooking exam. He has always wanted to be a chef, and he was about to take one step closer to his dream. The professor said the one who answered all his questions would get the certificate with honors and the money prize of $10,000. The most important thing is that this person will also be offered a sous chef position at one of the most prestigious restaurants in Paris. All the students answered 19 questions, and the professor read the last in the most complicated one. What product will never be salty when you boil it, no matter how much salt you add? Two days later, Stuart was on his way to Paris. He was the only one to know the answer. What product was the professor talking about? It's an egg in the shell. No matter how much salt there is in the water, the boiled egg won't be salty. Fiona left her husband a shopping list for him to go to the supermarket. These guys are really into riddles, so the list was full of them. Fiona wanted Mark to buy something that has eyes but can't see, something that has ears but can't hear, and the wealthiest nuts. What did Fiona want Mark to buy? Fiona needed some potatoes, corn, and cashews. Jenny was locked in a room with 15 other people. Each of them could see the entire room and all the people inside without turning their head or body or moving in any other way. To get out of the room, Jenny had to place an orange in such a way that everyone but one person could see it. The girl managed to do it, but how? She put the orange on one person's head. A notorious bad guy caught wealthy businessman Brian and locked him in a room. I won't let you go until you double the money I'll leave for you. And the criminal put $5,000 on the table. By the time he returned, Brian had already doubled the money. He hadn't left the room or communicated with anyone. Then how did he do it? He put the money in front of the mirror. Early in the morning, Ashton got a call from his friend, an owner of a big company. The man was in distress. A very important contract had disappeared from his office. It had been on the desk the evening before, but nowhere to be found in the morning. Ashton immediately headed to the office to question the employees. In no time, he had three suspects. Ben said he had spent the previous evening at the movies. Mason had taken his girlfriend out to dinner, and Jesse had been invited to a party. It didn't take Liam long to understand who was lying. It was Ben. His ticket wasn't torn, so he didn't actually go to the movies. Right before a restaurant was about to open, someone stole all the money from the office. A detective arrived for interrogation. A cook said that he was working hard and didn't have time to walk or gaze around, so he didn't see anything. The security guy said that he was in the bathroom and didn't steal anything. 
The waiter said he remembered seeing one visitor heading to the office. Somehow he ignored it and didn't stop them. The waiter got arrested for stealing the money. Why? The restaurant wasn't open yet. There could be no visitors. Blake was a writer applying for a job in a fashion magazine. However, the boss was a whimsical woman. Blake did the interview well, but still, the woman didn't want to hire her because Blake was too young. The boss poured some water into a glass and asked Blake to get her some apple juice to fail her. However, there were two conditions. She wanted the water in the glass, but didn't want it to mix with the juice. Still, Blake figured out how to do it and got the job. How? put the glass in the freezer and waited till the water got frozen, then she poured the juice on top of it. Della was having a birthday party. She invited three people over and got three presents, a pair of heels, a bag of makeup, and golden earrings. However, Eloise didn't like one of the presents. Can you guess which one and why? She didn't like the golden earrings just because she couldn't wear them. Her ears aren't pierced. Well, maybe she will consider piercing them. Jason is making pizza for his family, and Savannah went outside to make some grilled vegetables. Which one of them does something wrong? Jason. He forgot to turn on the oven. James was a famous detective who could crack even the hardest cases. Once, he was investigating a case and found some crucial evidence. The next morning, he woke up in a well. It was old, deep, but luckily not filled with water, but quite dusty. On the flip side, there was no way he could get out to the surface. Suddenly, James saw his main suspect's face at the top of the well. You won't live long enough to rat me out, the man shouted. And then, the detective felt soil falling on his head. The bad guy was going to bury him alive. But in an hour, James was already out of the well and running away. How did he manage to get out? The detective started to shake off and tamp down the soil that was falling into the well. He was getting closer and closer to the surface until he managed to jump out and run away. Jane was walking home late. She was pretty tired, so she decided to take a bus. It was midnight, but the bus was packed with people. You get a gut feeling later that there's something wrong with some of these people. Who's a zombie? There are 20 people on the bus. There are two zombies among them. A man on the right has a bit of a bandage on his arm and the woman next to the window seems to be groaning all the time. All the people in town thought Jack wasn't smart enough. Every time somebody offered him a 50C coin or a $1 bill, he would always choose the 50C coin. Many people every day would offer him to do it, but he never grabbed the bill. Why was Jack smart? Jack was actually pretty smart because he would get money without doing anything. As long as he agreed to get less money for no reason, people would come and try his trick again and again. See that car? Jack's been refusing $1 bills for over 10 years now, so he saved up enough money to get a car. You find yourself in a photo gallery. After looking at the wall, you realize that one of the pictures doesn't belong. You see a raccoon, a llama, a football, and a balloon. Can you tell which is the odd one out? You have seven seconds to guess. It's the llama picture. The other three objects have two double letters in their names. But the llama only has one double. And trust me, don't get too close to the llama. They might spit in your face. It's not fun. You have three matches. Can you make a six out of them without breaking them into pieces? Who said the number five has to be a standard six? The match is made a perfect Roman numeral three right from the get-go. 
So all you have to do is bring the bottoms of the first two matches toward each other, and you've got a Roman numeral six. It's your first day in the new office. Some colleagues don't seem really friendly, and you can't understand why. They also act strange, never have coffee breaks, and work at least 12 hours a day. A secretary at the reception desk, Lauren, tells that their company hires robots sometimes because they work harder than people and aren't addicted to coffee. She also says to stay away from them and try not to talk to them or even greet them because they can be unpredictable sometimes. It's quite easy to tell who's a robot. Can you guess who's a robot among these three people? Anna, Mike, and Lucy? It's Mike. He's the only one among three people who have a switch on the right. Hey, what if I show you some logos and you'll have to guess which one is the correct one? Let's start with Tesla. Which one do you choose? Yes, it's the one on the right. BMW. What's your choice? Again, the one on the right. Our next one is Subaru. What do you think? It's the one on the left. Do you like online shopping? What's the correct eBay logo? It's red, blue, yellow, and green. So, the one on the right. And now, Coca-Cola. What do you say? The left one, of course. Subway, white and yellow, or yellow and white? White and yellow, the one on the left. Are you a Redditor? Not that it matters, I just need your vote. And the left one is the correct logo. Abigail wanted to give her mom the best birthday present ever, but she had zero ideas. So she decided to sneak into her mom's computer and check what she had saved in her online shopping cart. When her mom left for work, Abigail sneaked into her office and turned on the computer. It required a password, but the girl didn't know it. Luckily, there was a note right next to the computer saying 9669. Abby tried it, but it didn't work. What's the password? The note is just turned upside down. The girl should try 6996. Mrs. Grossman left a jewelry store and found out that she'd forgotten her wallet at the cashier's desk. She returned, but the wallet wasn't there. She called the police. When they arrived, they asked if someone had seen the wallet. Lexi, the cashier, said that she hadn't seen it. Stephen, a customer, said that he had come up to the cashier to ask something, but he hadn't noticed any wallet. Cole, another customer, said that he'd been busy talking on the phone with his wife. It was Stephen. He said there had been no wallet near the cashier's desk, but no one specified where the lady had lost the wallet. The guy knew it because he'd taken it. Esme was having a walk deep in the forest and got lost. After hours of wandering around, she saw the witch's house. The witch was having a party. She turned 300 years old. Esme stuck around for a while to hang out with the witch and her friends. But then, the girl asked the witch to show her the way out. She answered that Esme had to help them. They had three chocolate bars and there were five people. Esme had to share these bars in such a way that everyone got the same amount of chocolate. If she succeeded, she'd go home. If not, she'd have to stay until the witch's 400th birthday. How can Esme share the chocolate? She should break each of the bars into five pieces. This way, everyone will get three pieces in total. On the last day of school, one of the students, Oakley, went missing. A detective arrived to investigate the case. There were three suspects, Mrs. Adams, the principal, Mr. Jones, the cleaning man, and Nora, Oakley's classmate. Mrs. Adams said she had a lot of paperwork to finish. 
She had spent the whole day in her office. Mr. Jones admitted he knew Oakley, but he said that he had nothing to do with this incident. Nora said she stayed at school after classes to do her homework for the next day, but she didn't see Oakley after the classes had finished. Who should the detective arrest? Nora, she said she'd been doing her homework, but it was the last day of school. No more homework. She's hiding something. Now, I'll show you some pictures and you'll have to figure out what's wrong with them. Let's go. Here's the first one. Look, the book's spine is on the wrong side. Okay, the next one. The road sign says that one can only turn right from the right lane, but there's no road there. Okay, I'm giving you a break. This should be easy for you. What's wrong here? Right, the athletes are playing soccer with a baseball. You gotta be very attentive. Here's a picture, but something is wrong in it. What is it? Look, the pool is frozen. No fun. In a small and quiet town, someone started to rob the bank every once in a while. The person was so fast that the police couldn't catch them. After another robbery, the police saw the criminal entering a grocery store. There were three customers inside, and they became the main suspects. Can you tell who the robber is? It's the girl in the middle. The first woman is wearing high heels, which means she wouldn't be able to run so fast. The third girl has a cast on her leg, so she's not a robber either. Detective Callum had to travel to a small town where young women disappeared every day. Four of them were already missing. Anna, Elle, Hannah, and Ada. After doing some research, the detective decided that the next target would be one of these four girls, Riley, Ellie, Ashley and Eve. Can you figure out who it will be? It seems like all the missing girls have palindromic names. Those sound the same no matter whether you read them from left to right or from right to left. The only girl with a palindromic name is Eve, so she must be the next target. While Mr. Coleman, a rich gentleman, was on vacation, his office was robbed. The police started an investigation. They found fingerprints of three people and interrogated them. Noelle, Mr. Coleman's secretary, said that she'd been coming to the office to water the plants. Rob, the man's business partner, said that he'd come once to get some important documents. Brandon, the cleaning man, said that he'd been washing the floor every two days. Who robbed the office? It was Noelle. She said she'd been watering the plants, but look, there's not a single plant in Mr. Coleman's office. John was on an expedition to the South Pole. One day, he woke up in a frozen cave. He didn't remember what happened, but he knew he had to get out. He saw three doors and a poster. It said that behind the first door, there was a room filled with toxic gas. Behind the second one, there was a huge lake. And behind the third door, there was a room where sharp icicles fell from the ceiling every second. John couldn't swim. Which door should he choose to stay safe? He should pick the second door. He's at the South Pole. It's cold there, so the lake must be frozen, and the guy won't have to swim. Aurora decided to spend her summer vacation in the countryside. She loved taking long trips to the nearby forest on her own. Once, she came across an old mansion. It dated back to the 18th century, and no one had lived there since then. It was dusty inside. There was no light or electricity, but the place was beautiful. Suddenly, the door got locked behind Aurora's back. She saw three ways out. Behind the first door, there were many hungry rats. Behind the second door, there was a 500-foot deep hole. 
Behind the third door, there was an electro laser that would immediately burn her. Which door is safe? The third one, there's no electricity, so the laser won't work. Dylan was abroad, enjoying the sun and his long-awaited vacation. One day, he met a beautiful girl at the beach. The guy spent the whole day with her. In the evening, he realized he didn't know her name. He asked if he could take her out the next day. The girl agreed, but only if he guessed her name. Dylan was devastated, but luckily, the girl <sighs> liked him too. She wrote something on a piece of paper to give him a hint. Here's what it said. Can you figure out the girl's name? Ignore the numbers and look at the letters. Together, they make up the name Laura. It must be the girl's name. Jelena wanted to go to the party her classmate was throwing, but her mom didn't let her go. Mrs. Miller felt bad for not allowing her daughter to have some fun. Then, she remembered that her parents had recently moved to a little farm and got some goats. She suggested that Jelena should visit her grandparents on the farm instead. The girl agreed, but instead of going to the farm, she went to the party. When Jelena returned home on Sunday evening, her mom asked her if she had liked the farm. The girl said yes. She didn't know how chickens were so cute. After this, Jelena got grounded. Why? There were only goats on the grandparents' farm. Her mom figured out the girl hadn't gone there. Otherwise, she'd know it. It was snowing in the morning. Detective Callum didn't have much work during the day, but in the evening, the owner of the jewelry store reported that his business had been robbed. Detective Callum asked people who lived next door what they had been doing at that time. In three houses, people said they hadn't left home that day, but the detective figured out that one of them was lying. Who was it and how did the detective understand it? It was someone from the second house. It was snowing in the morning. If no one had left home, there wouldn't be any snow under the cars. But there's snow underneath this car. A rich woman was traveling on a little but fancy cruise ship. She was robbed one night during a storm. Someone said that one of the passengers, Logan, had been very suspicious the whole time. He'd always been watching the woman. The detective interrogated Logan, but the man denied stealing anything. He said that during the storm, he'd been in his cabin writing a letter to his wife. He then showed the letter to the detective. Here it is, take a look at it. Why did the detective arrest Logan? Logan said he'd been writing the letter during the storm, but the ship was rocking on the waves. The handwriting is too neat for Logan to be saying the truth. This is Easton. He was walking in the forest. Unfortunately, he got lost. It was cold since it was winter. After wandering around for a while, Easton saw three roads. All of them seemed dangerous. If the guy took the road leading to the left, he'd have to go through the area where a pack of hungry wolves lived. If he went straight ahead, he'd go through a place inhabited by huge brown bears. The right road would lead him to a lake covered with thin ice. Which way should Easton choose? He should pick the road leading straight ahead. The brown bears living there won't be dangerous. It's winter, and these animals sleep during this season. Serena went to the spookiest house in the neighborhood on her own. That definitely was a mistake. When she got inside, the door got locked behind her. Now she had three ways out. Behind the first door, there was a zombie. Behind the second door, there was a vampire. Behind the third door, there was an angry ghost. Ooh. Which way is the safest? Serena should choose the third door. Ghosts may be spooky, but they can't cause any real harm. Serena told her friends about her adventures and, of course, they didn't believe her. So the next night, one of them, Rylan, decided to go to the house too. Once he walked in, the door behind him got locked. And again, there were three ways out. 
But this time, behind the first door, there was a huge magnifying glass. It used the light from the sun to burn anyone and anything that was inside. Behind the second door, there was a huge dragon that disliked strangers. And behind the third door, there was a hungry lion. Which way should Ryland choose to survive? Luckily for him, it's night. There's no sun, so the magnifying glass won't cause any harm. The first door is the safest choice. Archer was going to throw a birthday party. He invited all his friends. But that was also the day when he found out that one of them was an alien. Can you tell who? It's Alex. Look, both of his shoes are left one. Eh, that's weird. In a parallel universe, it's only allowed to have fun and eat sweets. Studying is against the law. Mrs. Noslow came home after a party in a club and asked her daughters about their day. Eve said she had been playing computer games all day long. Anna said she'd invited her friends over. They made a huge pizza and ate it together. Hannah said she hadn't even left her bed. She was watching YouTube videos. In reality, one of the girls was secretly studying. Ooh. Anna, look at her hands. There are some ink stains. If she had been watching YouTube, she wouldn't have used a pen. Karina was going to become a historian. After classes, she liked to go to the History Museum to read her books and learn new things. One day, while the girl was studying there, she went to the bathroom, leaving her stuff behind. When she returned, she discovered that her wallet was missing. Noel said she never paid attention to Karina or her stuff. Tucker said that at that time, he was on the phone with his friend. Lyra said she hadn't stolen anything. Who lied? Tucker. It's prohibited to talk on the phone in the museum. Mrs. Moore had a rule. If her daughters wanted to eat ice cream in the evening, they had to do some housework during the day. On a rainy Tuesday, she came back from work and asked her daughters what they'd done. Charlotte said she'd vacuum cleaned the second floor. Indiana said she'd done the laundry. Polaris said she'd watered the plants in the garden. Who didn't eat ice cream that day? Polaris. She said she'd watered the flowers. But why would she do it if it was raining outside? Detective Callum is on a mission to find a vampire and an elf. He knows that the vampire lives in the red house on the left side of the neighborhood. Look closely at this family and find the vampire. It's this guy. He's walking past the mirror, but there's no reflection. Now, back to the elf. He lives in the greenhouse on the right side of the neighborhood. Detective Callum has started to watch this building, too. Luckily, he has only spotted two people. But who is the elf? It must be this guy. Look, his ears are pointed. Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell called the police. They said that their son, a private school student, hadn't come back from school. The problem was that he suffered from amnesia. The police started to search the city. They found three teenagers with amnesia who didn't know their names or the names of their parents. And still, they managed to figure out who Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell's son was. Can you understand it? It's the guy in the middle. Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell's son went to school in the morning and didn't return, so he must still be wearing his school uniform. Phoebus crossed the border of two countries every day, riding his bike and wearing a huge backpack. 
The custom officers checked his bag every day but couldn't find anything prohibited. And still, they were sure that Phoebus was up to no good. They were actually right, but they couldn't understand what was wrong. Can you figure it out? Look, every time, Phoebus rides a different bike. He smuggles bikes right in front of their noses. Mrs. Adams came back home. She had three children who were grounded and not allowed to watch TV. When she was about to get into the house, she heard that the TV was on. But when she entered, it had already been turned off. Serenity was in the garden. She said she had been redoing her flower bed for the last couple of hours. Cressida was upstairs in her room doing her homework. Everett was in the garage playing the guitar. Who lied? Serenity. No one works in the garden wearing a dress. Also, she's completely clean and doesn't have any garden tools with her. Oliver is terrible at packing. Whenever he goes somewhere, he always takes the stuff he'll never need. Today, he's packing to go camping in the forest. Take a look inside his bag and decide what he won't need on the trip. Look, there's an electric kettle. There's no electricity in the forest, so he can definitely leave it at home. Now, look at what Oliver has packed for a weekend at his parents' house. What things won't he need? There are two huge towels. I'm pretty sure his parents have spare towels. He can leave them at home. Oliver is going on vacation to a deserted island. He will spend a couple of days there, trying to survive on his own. What things won't he need on the island? Oh boy, don't take this laptop with you. It'll run out of power really fast. Susie was finally going on vacation. And she was planning to spend it in Mexico. She lived alone, so she asked her friend to look after her plants and her cat. The friend agreed and took them to her house. When Susie returned, she realized that someone had been in her house while she had been away. How did Susie understand it? Susie lives alone. But look, several packages were delivered while she was away. And somehow, they are inside, not outside the house. Elijah got into a road accident. He crashed into a tree. He smashed his car and got several bruises himself. He didn't break any rules, and still, when the police arrived, they noticed one small detail and took his driver's license away. Why? Elijah is wearing glasses. He's got a couple of cuts on his face, but his glasses aren't broken, even a bit. The police suspected that even though the guy had poor eyesight, he wasn't wearing his glasses while driving. He must have put them on only after the accident. Sebastian was a famous archaeologist who dedicated his life to finding the treasures of ancient civilizations. One day, he found a chest full of golden coins in a cave. They dated back to 2000 BCE. For some reason, Sebastian was terribly disappointed with this discovery. Why? The coins were fake. Back in 2000 BCE, people didn't know they were living in the era before the current one, so they couldn't possibly have engraved this date on their coins. Nice catch. A hat and scarf cost $110. The hat is $100 more expensive than the scarf. How much does the scarf cost? $5. It means that the hat is $105, which is exactly $100 more than the scarf. 
Mia was a shop assistant on a giant cruise liner. Once, she found an expensive watch in the boutique where she worked and announced it on the radio. Soon, four people showed up in the store. Each of them claimed it was their watch. Mia looked at all of them attentively and realized who the watch belonged to. Can you figure it out too? This man does have a watch tan line, but it's much bigger than the watch Mia found. This young girl already has a watch on her left hand. Why would she wear the second one? Hmm. The elderly lady must be very absent-minded. Her dog is wearing her watch as a collar. The watch must belong to the teenager. <laughs> Nick was an experienced skydiver, but one day something went wrong. A strong gust of wind brought him to the forest. The man found himself among trees with no food or water. Soon, Nick saw four roads in front of him. One led to a super massive black hole that swallowed everything that got close. The second road ended in a sea full of sharks. The third road led to a mountain that was impossible to climb over. And the fourth road ended in a bottomless abyss. Which road should Nick take? He should follow the third road. No one says he has to climb over the mountain. He can simply go around it. During which month do people sleep the least? During February, it only has 28, maximum 29 days. A man is on the run from the police after he stole three massive gold bars. 30 pounds each. Oh, no. At some point, he reaches a long bridge that can support only 260 pounds. The man weighs 200 pounds. How can he transport all three gold bars in one go? He has to walk across the bridge while juggling the bars. It means that at any time, only two bars will be on the bridge since the third one will always be in the air. Look attentively at these three men carrying a log. One of them is cheating. Can you figure out who it is? It's the man in the middle. For one thing, he's wearing a suit, which is a strange choice of clothing for such a task. Plus, his face is quite relaxed, and his eyes are open. It doesn't look as if carrying the lug feels like hard work for him. One evening, Emma went to take out the trash from her coffee shop. She was about to leave when she spotted something dark in the corner behind the trash bins. It was a young woman, and she was unconscious. Emma rushed to her. The girl's bag and smartphone were lying nearby on the ground. The first person on the contact list was named Big Sis. Emma called the number and heard a female voice. I found your sister lying on the ground. It seems someone hit her on the head. What? The woman was shocked and promised to come immediately. Next, Emma called the police. The sister and police officers arrived at the same time. Arrest this woman. She's behind the attack. Oh. And Emma pointed at the sister. Why did she say so? She didn't tell the sister where to come. How did she know the address? Oh. There are four cups on the counter, all of them upturned and hiding the same number of sweets underneath. Near each of the cups, there is a sign that says how many sweets are under it. The signs are five or six, seven or eight, six or seven, and seven or five. Only one of these signs is correct. How many sweets are there under each cup? Since only one sign is correct, the right number can't appear twice. Otherwise, more than one sign will be correct. It means that there are eight sweets under each cup. Luke took part in a scientific experiment, but something went terribly wrong. He ended up in a place where there was nothing but three portals. One of them led to a polar desert in Antarctica. The second one opened into a volcanic crater filled with molten lava. And behind the third portal, there was the age of dinosaurs, with huge diplodocuses roaming around. Which portal should the man choose? Uh. 
Luke would freeze in no time in a polar desert. Molten lava isn't even an option. But Diplodocuses are totally harmless to people. They only eat plants. Look at the picture attentively and say which of these people is left-handed. It's the waiter. It's easier for a left-handed person to hold the tray in the right hand and deal with the food and drinks with the left, dominant hand. <laughs> Detective Henry Taylor was getting ready for work when he heard screams from his neighbor's house. He rushed there. The door was locked. The man had to kick it several times before it opened. He found his neighbor, Miss Anderson, in the living room. She was tied to a chair. Oh, I'm so happy you heard me shouting. An hour ago, a man knocked on my door and said he was an electrician. But as soon as I let him in, he tied me up and took all the priceless paintings I had got from my grandfather, and then he just ran away. Hmm. Detective Taylor had to arrest the woman for staging the theft. How did he know? When he tried to get into the house, the door was latched from the inside. Who could do it if Miss Anderson was tied up and the thief supposedly ran out of the house in a hurry? You have five pieces of chain, and each of them is made up of three links. You have to make a long chain out of these five pieces. Welding an open link will cost you $3, and breaking a link open is $1. Can you make a long chain if you have only $15? First, take one piece of chain and break all of its three links open. It'll cost you $3, then link the remaining four pieces of the chain with these open links. Welding these links will cost you another $9. In total, you'll only pay $12. In the middle of a long flight, two passengers stood up and started to threaten the crew and passengers. They demanded $1 million in a helicopter. One of the criminals had a pilot's license and could fly a copter. When the plane landed at the nearest airport, the passengers got everything they had requested a case full of money, and a helicopter. But when they got inside, they didn't manage to fly away and were captured by the police. Why couldn't they start the machine if the helicopter didn't have any technical problems? The helicopter was okay, but there was no fuel in its tank. Michael got lost when he was walking in the forest. After hours of wandering around, he finally saw a weird-looking house that seemed to be deserted. Still, the guy decided to try his luck and ask for directions. But when he entered the house, the door shut behind his back with a loud bang, and he heard a voice, You've entered my home uninvited. You won't leave it easily. Oh, no. After that, Michael found himself in a room with three doors. The voice told him that only one of those doors led to freedom. Behind the first door, there were starving wolves. The second door hid a furious werewolf. And behind the third door, there was a huge, raging campfire. Which door is safe? Michael should wait until the campfire goes out and get out of the house through the third door. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.